Let's get more thoughts about what's happening in the Middle East. Talk to uh, Aziz Abu Sara, he's director of Middle East projects at George Mason University, joining us on the line from Washington tonight. Thanks for being with us. It's appreciated. Um, we, we, we witnessed, didn't we, the Tunisian president fleeing the country quite soon after the revolt began in that country. Then it looked, it took Hosni Mubarak two weeks, a fortnight, to decide to step down. How long do you think Colonel Gaddafi has got left tonight? I think he has either a few hours or maximum few days before he leaves. I think the mistake Gaddafi did is he drew on the experience of what happened in, in Tunisia and in, in Egypt, and he thought that they didn't use enough force, and he thought, if I crack down with more force and kill more people, then I have more chance of succeeding. And what we see is exact opposite. He's only making it faster for him to, to end up leaving power. Yeah, I don't know if you can shed any light on this. Eyewitnesses reporting that the authorities have been using military air power to crack down on the protesters. Uh, I don't know if you know if that's true or not. If true, w would that stop them? I, I think what happens is the more death you have over there and the more people who are getting hurt, the more energized the crowd will be and the more opposed to the regime. We saw that in Egypt after the crackdown and the protesters and after the police got more and more involved uh, in it and, and more thugs got, came and attacked the protesters, more and more people joined the protesters, even those who were sympathetic to some level to the Egyptian president. And the same thing we're seeing today in Libya. Uh, for We see now more protests happening in new cities. We see Tripoli uh, having way more protesters coming out. And that's, that's uh, the important thing is that the protests are moving from the eastern part of Libya to the western part of Libya as well. Let's talk about the political reaction to this. Uh, over in Washington, D.C. with you, uh, uh, Ghanish Shikana correspondent just now, uh, touched on this, but the U.S. is accused, isn't it, of taking quite a weak stance at the moment when it comes to the events in Libya. If the regime does fail, as you intimated it could do uh, imminently, what will that mean for American interests in the region? Well, the U.S. has been taking a weak stand through the whole process from Tunisia to Egypt, now to Bahrain, which it's almost been silent on, to, to Libya. Uh, and it's been taking the weak stand because it's afraid that the fall of the regime in, in Libya will uh, create more revolts in other Arab countries. We've seen because of Tunisia a few more revolts and because of Egypt many more have been protesting in other Arab countries. And the assumption is if Libya falls then in new countries that we haven't been expecting to have protests will, will also start protesting. But they're also looking at the short term of their interest and they're looking at the oil and, and Libya is a very important oil exporter. And so this will, will, in the short term, affect the sale of uh, the prices of oil in, in the United States. When do you think all this is going to calm down? Many analysts predict this unrest is set to spread even further. Where is it going to stop? It's, it's very hard to predict which countries it's going to uh, go to after. I mean, people would never have predicted that Egypt would be the second. Everybody thought Egypt is the most, uh, most stable country. Joe Biden, even three days after the start of the protest, called the Egyptian president not a dictator and a good ally of the United States. So it's very hard to know. But, but from what we see now, we, we know that probably uh, Yemen is going to continue in the protest, the Bahrain uh, situation, which will have a lot of effect on other Gulf countries, which at the moment nobody's putting them on the map of danger area. But I think if, if Libya falls, then Morocco, other Gulf countries, uh, uh, Yemen, all these countries uh, feel danger that th they might be next. We're watching it very closely. Thanks for your input into the program tonight. Uh, as is Ebu Sara from George Mason University.